I'd like to begin by thanking you all to be come out here in the middle of a cold, damp day. I do appreciate your making the time to be here this afternoon, so thank you for that. I believe we're ready to get started. So with that, let's begin. How fortunate we are to live in an era of newfound respect for differences. We've seen new vocabulary arise in recent years. Words like diversity and inclusion receive significant emphasis as parts of the lexicon in the national work environment. Diversity and inclusion. They're both old words in English but words of new importance. They are both old words, but words which in ASL are very complementary. The sign for diversity appropriately reaches out. And the sign for inclusion appropriately draws in. All of us at Gallaudet, of course, thinking both in ASL and English, must reach out and must draw in. It was tempting to start by trying to convince you of the benefits of diversity. It would have been easy to begin by citing the added value of diversity in all that we do, but I believe we are beyond that point. We are a university filled with smart students being educated. We are a university filled with well-educated faculty and staff. And we are a university. So I believe it's not necessary to convince you of the benefits of diversity and inclusion. Now, some of you may disagree with me, and some perhaps strongly and insist we must be regularly reminded of the benefits of these topics. But we work in a university. We are well educated. Therefore, I hope we have accepted the syllogism that we have concerned and considered and accepted that diversity and inclusion add value. We all follow the discourse of the day. That dialogue surrounds us in the nation's capital. In fact, we see the theater of diversity and inclusion so openly here in Washington, D.C. Whatever our political beliefs, we must feel pride in President Obama's words during his inaugural address. Unfortunately, we live in a time when the theater of constant contention in Washington is tragic to observe. We also witness times when the theater of Washington is comic to consider. And we often see the mask of this theater. It shows tragedy on one hand and shows comedy on the other. But on occasion, we see through to the underlying truth. <laughs> Labeled groups in every generation seek respect. People who are deaf have started to look back on one of those movements. In fact, we're now celebrating Deaf President Now, DPN. 
It was 25 years ago in March of 1988, the Gallaudet community came together for an extraordinary week. Consider the words, came together, such very powerful words and a powerful outcome. We were a diverse community then as we are now, but we came. We changed our university. We changed our community. We changed the world. The DPN movement sought a new deaf university president, but it was so much more. It was for the recognition of our dignity and our self-esteem. It was for the recognition of our abilities and achievements. And it was for the recognition of our purpose and character. <laughs> DPN succeeded when other righteous causes have not. And why is that? We showed the country that our struggles were their struggles. We showed the country that our purpose was in fact their purpose. And we showed the country that our triumph was their triumph. I believe one of the reasons why DPN succeeded was because of its inclusion. Everyone inside and outside of the university was part of our cause. That inclusion provided the strength to overcome. We reached out to others and felt their warmth in return. We learned that the wider the gates are open, the more we can welcome others. Because of DPN, for the first time, many people across the country saw through to the heart of people who are deaf. We showed ourselves as a contributing part of America's Society Diverse Coalition. Deaf President Now, what wonderful words. DPN led to more access and insight. Later, the messages of DPN became codified. They became codified in the wonderful Americans with Disabilities Act. We are all proud that DPN succeeded. And we are all now honoring our successes. So do we label diversity groups at Gallaudet? Yes. However, we are moving to speak of diversity in more generalized concepts. Now look at another quotation with a similar meaning, but totally different wording. The fight for equality is an issue for many labeled groups in our society. The national discussion on the rights of those of diverse sexual orientation provides us with a absolutely stunning example. National attention is focused on the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered community, LGBT. Again, terminology is receiving increased attention. Over time, terms that are new to many of us are added to the national vocabulary. But, of course, it's not the terminology that so much matters. In my view, the LGBT community is gaining acceptance and appears well on its way to attaining full legal rights. They ask not to be special. 
Instead, they ask to be equal and to have equal rights. They ask to raise families and to serve their country. I feel pride in the LGBT community's success. I feel humbled by their tremendous discipline and effort. I feel the dignity of their determination. I feel the understanding of their anger as well. Large numbers of young people demonstrate open and empathetic acceptance of sexual diversity. It is many in the younger generation who help lead the way to LGBT acceptance and inclusion. It is a lesson being taught by youth, and it is a lesson to be learned by those in older generations. I celebrate these changes and express my admiration for what you have done. Again, we are learning that the wider the gates are open, the more room there is for all of us. All of us know how confusing it can be to share our world with those who have no experience with us. We also know the heartache of feeling their uninformed judgment. We have learned our heritage one by one from each other. We have fought to develop our history and culture. The wider the gates of acceptance open, the more room there is for all. And sadly, the community that excludes shrinks and dies. I remind you all, we are a university. We are filled with educated faculty and staff and students obtaining their education but I am regularly informed of the simmering unresolved conflicts between some of these groups on campus. We need to act better in our conversations with each other and in our written exchanges with others. Many say this is my responsibility. It must start at the top. I can and I am bringing the issue to the surface. But there is no magic programming that will open each of your hearts. Many say these conflicts are someone else's responsibility to resolve. But I say each of us must work to resolve these issues. And many say this cannot be resolved, that it's simply here to stay. But to that I say, we will face these issues and we will face them down. We must open our gates wide to all who would come here. I don't claim to understand what life is like for anyone else, so I can only speak for myself. But I can believe we all sometimes feel alone and excluded. And we all sometimes feel a longing for respect. And we all sometimes feel the desire for acceptance and understanding to be included. We must open our hearts for those who want to be here, no matter what their label. We must make all feel at home. 
We must be equal under the principles by which we operate Gallaudet. This acceptance must transcend basic hospitality. And why is that? It's because acceptance is the reflection of our character to share our deaf culture with others. And acceptance is the basic generosity of spirit and how we should interact with each other. And acceptance is the moral force of how we should behave. What contrasting prose? William James uses every element of the eloquence of the English language. And Rodney King, recently deceased, makes only a simple but admirable appeal. Both of them touch on my theme for the day. First, we know we are diverse. Secondly, we know we can be inclusive of others. And thirdly, we know we must respect diversity and foster inclusion. In our lives, let us strive to substitute William James's moral forces the moral forces between individuals for what has been labeled microaggressions, which is the subtle demeaning of those excluded groups. And the concepts of intersectionality, which is the study of the ways discrimination among various minorities groups interact. All of this needs to be a part of our discussions on campus. Let us move forward together. Diversity is strength. We've seen this throughout the history of our community. Inclusion is strength. It's not always easy to be with those who are different from us, who may even criticize our beliefs and our backgrounds. Diversity and inclusion are strengths. But to live up to them, we must be wise, respectful, flexible, and show courage. We cannot exclude. We cannot stand only for ourselves. We cannot accept a limit, a static idea of what our community should be. Can we not help those on their long journey? What happens if we exclude? What happens if we stand only for ourselves? And what happens if we limit ourselves? It's then that we fail. Because instead of fulfilling our most inclusive and diverse vision, we become isolated and assaulted by forces that don't understand us and don't care to. So I encourage all of us to expand our own limits, enlarge our circle of friends and colleagues to be inclusive of others who are different from us, embrace others from different backgrounds in the common cause of advancing our community <coughs> and humanity. Right. 
let me bring both hands to the middle in producing this sign for together. And let us move forward with respect and acceptance for diversity and inclusion. I am proud to lead this university. I end my message today with a challenge to all of us. Commit to acknowledge, support, and engage all others. Commit to mutually respectful dialogues, attitudes, and kind gestures. Commit to opening the gates wide. And finally, Commit to being heroes for one another. Thank you.